Who is the Joker? It's time for a bedtime story to put fear into your bones. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites for you to understand. And then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. The Joker is one creepy individual. He has so many versions of his origin. Some say that he was a comedian driven insane, while others say that he led a gang of individuals against Gotham back in the day. But there is one rumor going around that he is known as the Pale Man in certain circles, that he is immortal, older than anything. During the events of Batman Eternal, Arkham Asylum crumbled to dust and many of its inmates escaped. Most of them were recaptured, but five of them remained loose out in Gotham. Without much to do at Arkham Manor, Ma Reen was sent home by Eric Border, one of the orderlies for Arkham. He told her that she needed to rest and that he had everything under control. So taking him up on his offer, she went home, only to enter her house and find all five patients sitting in chairs around the middle of the room. The biggest of the brutes tells her not to worry. They just want to tell her something. Half of them are talking gibberish, spouting nonsense about his horns and the lies that he can tell. But she does make out what's going on. The Joker has told them all stories, stories of who he is, what he is. So the first man begins. Ephraim tells the story of the devil that he met 20 years ago and how he finally realizes that that devil is the Joker. But Maureen stops him. That's not possible. The Joker has only been active for five years, Ephraim. And he snaps. That's what he wants you to think. But I know the truth now. 20 years ago, I saw him come out of the ground. That crooked grin of his and that laughter put fire into Ephraim's bones. The Joker is the one that told Ephraim where the girls are and how to kill them. So the other night, the Joker came back. He rose inside of Ephraim's cell. Through fire and brimstone, he formed into a man and he asked Ephraim if he missed the laughter wrapping around his soul. The Devil Joker explained that he is everlasting and forever, and even though Batman thinks he's beat him, he just needs to climb back out of the brimstone, back to his real home. He explained to Ephraim what was needed. Five stories of his origin would be told to Maureen, and she would pick the real one. That person would live, but the others would die. And she needs to pick one before they get to his spot. Otherwise, they all die. With this knowledge in tow, the group makes its way into the city and they end up capturing two police officers. That's when Deer sees the sign, a chip on one of the police officers' arms. It's her turn to tell her story about the Joker and what he is. She explains that she used to be happy with her husband and her children, but one day everything changed. Her husband came back different. He was a robot. Every night, he would add more robot parts to her children. She could see them on their smartphones and their computers, interfacing, becoming less human. So she killed them one day and dug deeper and deeper until she found the chip in their brains that changed them. The doctors told her that there was never a chip, but she knew the truth. He confirmed it. The Joker appeared to her one night and explained, he did it. He's the one that changed them. He's been doing it for years, sneaking into homes and changing everyone into robots to make them more like him. He can't die because he builds new bodies all the time, and he just moves to a new one. Maureen stops her, though. Can't you all see? He's just playing into your fantasies. He's telling you what you want to hear. But Ephraim denies that. No, he's showing us the truth. He's showing us how it all really happened. But before they can do anything else, a bunch of the Jokerized victims from the night of the story Endgame jump through the windows. Joker is currently running around Gotham, spreading his toxins. And if you want to know more about how Batman stopped him, click about now. So the inmates begin fighting with the Jokerized monsters, and Maureen takes this opportunity to run off and call Eric Border. Eric, you have to help me. I've been taken by the escapees, and Gotham has turned into some kind of hell. I stole this phone off of a body, but the police won't pick up. 
At first I was selfish, I wanted to know what they knew. They talked to the Joker, and I thought I could help my research. But each of these stories is more insane than the last. Why did you send me home, Eric Border? Why? But before she could continue, she's startled by Morton, the large hulking man behind her. And Morton grabs her and says that the running makeup down her face was his sign, his turn to tell a tale. From Morton, his mother used to tell him a bedtime story about an evil clown that went from factory to factory, claiming that he could make them laugh again. But once they laughed, they died. Eventually, the clown was trapped in one of those warehouses and the factory workers lit it on fire. But the clown just laughed and he juggled as he burned to the ground and he became nothing more than ashes. This story scared Morton, so he ran from his home not knowing what to do and he found himself in front of a comedy club where he heard people laughing. That's how he ended up in Arkham. He was only trying to save the poor people because in Gotham, if you laugh, you die. But then a few days ago, the Joker appeared in Morton's cell, and he tried to strangle him with clown scarves. He told Morton that very few people knew the true story of the Joker, but Morton's mother was one of them. Morton broke down into tears. I don't want the Joker to kill anyone. He said he'll make them all laugh because his biggest joke is yet to come. Just then, the rest of the inmates arrive, grabbing Maureen, and they run into the sewers, and eventually, they find themselves standing in front of a door with graffiti done up like it was a heart. And Cassidy knew that it was his turn. He explained that he was in the army and involved in a special project. Cassidy was brought there with many soldiers from Gotham and then he found a battering in the rocks at this random training facility. So he snuck deep into the base to find out what was really going on. And he found that he was a part of a new program, a military program to make a new Batman. He was discharged from the military for his sneaky research, so he did some digging, a lot of digging, and what he found startled him. There are multiple Batman in history. They are actually an elite military squad, and the whole project is funded by Wayne Enterprises. There isn't one Batman. There's an entire army of Batman. Cassidy counted them all, and he counted over 100, so he put on a Batman costume, and he decided he was going to join them. It's what he was supposed to do. But the first man he went to didn't believe him, so he killed him. This is how Cassidy ended up in Arkham. But then a few nights ago, the Joker appeared to him, and he explained that he, in fact, is the first of the Batmen. He started the Batman army, but the Batman army started to put something into the water to make the populace more docile, so he had to fight against them to be something greater. He started a war against the army of Batman as the Joker, something scarier than Batman, but something that could also make everyone in Gotham laugh. No one believed him though, but he knew that Cassidy would, because Cassidy found his original Batarang. But Maureen once again stops the story. That's not real. Why can't any of you see that he's using you? There is no secret military base, and there's no conspiracy about an army of Batman. There's no convincing these inmates though. As they get back topside, they find an elevator in front of them and they all go up into a publishing house. Once they get up there, they find a book titled The Clown Prince by Maureen Zahir. And that's when Mrs. Chen says, it's her turn to tell a story as Maureen just stands there in shock. Maureen explains that she came to Gotham and has for years been trying to figure out the Joker for her tell-all book, and the book is going to be announced next week. No one was able to figure out the Joker's true origin, they just couldn't, until four months ago, she finally figured it all out. He's not some devil or a robot or a nightmare from another time, he's just a very sick man. So she walks over to a desk where all of her research is being kept. Here, let me show you. His name is William Distel, and he was four years old when his sister went missing. His parents were so frightened that they abandoned him. He grew up in six different foster homes, and he scared each one of them. He was also a bully who never made friends, and he convinced other children to fight each other. When he was 16, he ran away. And until zero hour, he faked his death with the Red Hood gang. 
Ephraim begins to hold his head, shouting, Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! This is all a test! He's just trying to tempt us! He's tempting us to believe that it's not true! But I know the truth. I know my master! Maureen screams, no, as she runs into one of the back rooms, and she tries to call Eric Border again. Please pick up Eric, she says to herself as the phone begins to ring. But back in the back of the room, she can hear the phone ringing. Eric Border is standing behind her. I got your message, Maureen. You think I wouldn't come for a friend in need? She runs over and she hugs him. Thank God, it's been a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. It's the Joker, he found out about our project. We need to call the police. And Eric laughs. <laughs> Maureen steps back as she sees that she is in fact holding the Joker. No, 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 no. Oh, come on, Maureen. We've been such close pals. I still remember how nice you were on the day that I came to Arkham. You showed me the ropes. Maureen is taken back. All of the work we did. Oh, it's a good story, isn't it? Not quite as good as the one where I'm a secret robot. Beep, boop, bop. But it's a good one, nonetheless. I did my best to come up with a story that you needed. A few bribes here and a few government documents, and it made you so happy. But Maureen just says, why? So the Joker obliges. The same reason I saw all of them. You wanted to know who I was. So the Joker hands Maureen a gun with five bullets. Since we're pals, I'm giving you the gun, and you decide whose story is the real one. That's the only one that gets to live. I said that at the start. But none of them are real, Maureen says defeated. Well then, here's the sixth bullet, just in case, the Joker replies, handing her another bullet. What if I shoot you, she asks. But then she looks up and sees that he's gone. Where did you go? Where I always go. Back to the little corner in the back of your head. Where all the bad things hide. That's where I'm really from. That's the real truth to it. Maureen looks down at the gun, and she realizes that the inmates are trying to break into the room. She tries to put the pieces together. She begins to realize that Eric Border isn't real. That he's actually the Joker. Eric? Eric? She calls it out as the inmates on the other side of the door reply with, well, I'm almost through. So she looks back to the gun again. Oh God, oh sweet God. Our story ends with multiple shots fired as Maureen killed every inmate that entered the room. But once the sixth shot was fired, we knew that she took her own life. Thank you guys for joining me for this rather creepy edition of the comic story and videos. This probably would have been better on Halloween, but I felt giving you a creepy ghost story about the Joker would be a good fit for the month of Batman. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, at Comic Story, and you go to our Facebook, facebook.com backslash eligible monster, and you check out our subreddit, r slash comic storian. Or the Joker may come find you next. <laughs>